my great pleasure to to share this this session uh, with uh, a very nice talk on topics on re in region theory and synthesis problems. Uh, I'm very happy to present you uh, Luca Bernardinello, who you know well. Luca is a researcher on the University of Milano Bicocca. And uh, his research focuses on uh, theory of concurrency and of formal models of concurrent and distributed systems. In particular, he works on the foundations and applications on Petrinet theory. So uh, Luca, of course, is well known for the com in our community, also in ACSD community. And uh, uh, he has worked in several uh, European projects related to the, the topics that I just commented. Uh, uh, I would like to highlight his work on Petrinet synthesis, which is related to uh, the, the talk today. So I can remember his paper in 93. Uh, it was almost uh, 20 years ago. And uh, we can continuously see, and we have seen that in the previous session on region theory, that uh, the community is continuously citing this impactful research that Luca has been doing in the last years. So for instance, I was counting the number of citations. Remember that in these regular papers in this conference, we have 16 papers. And among these 16 papers, there are several, there are, there are seven citations from these 16 to his works. That pretty much summarizes what uh, Luca impact has been to the community. Without further delay, I would like to really uh, give the floor to Luca and hope uh, I'm looking forward for the presentation. The floor is yours. Thank you, Josep, for an extremely kind introduction, maybe even too much kind. And thanks for inviting me um, at this conference. I attend this conference. Um, I have been attending this conference since I think 89. So. It's a real pleasure and an honor to, to give uh, an invited talk. And uh, of course, I would say the uh, topic of my talk will be regions and synthesis problems. It is true that we already uh, listened to some nice presentations about uh, synthesis problems. It's maybe curious that I think we didn't hear the word region in, in the last uh, presentations, but uh, for sure the notion of region is, so to speak, in the, backward, uh, in the background, sorry. Um, even if uh, I think that now there are some attempts to free synthesis problems from uh, the uh, the idea of region, but I will stick to uh, regions in this talk. And I will present a few um, ideas and uh, open problems, which I find interesting. There will be no uh, real new results. Uh, towards the end, I will present uh, an idea which, as far as I know, is um, an original idea, but uh, mostly I will go back to uh, the work I have done with uh, the help of uh, many colleagues, too many to mention each of them, um, and uh, try to take stock of this uh, long work, long time work, um, and uh, try to suggest uh, some uh, uh, problems which I think are still interesting uh, uh, even after so so long time. So I will very shortly, I at least I will attempt to very shortly uh, recap some notions uh, about uh, regions and synthesis problems. Maybe in the audience there might be someone who didn't work on it. And I will start with uh, the work, I think we can really call it a seminal work on bi-structures by Andrzej Ehrenpoist and Grzegorz Rosenberg in, the, in 1990. Uh, bi-structures are very abstract uh, structures, essentially are sets with uh, a 
uh, an equivalence relation on uh, pairs of elements of uh, those sets. But uh, we can look at them as a, uh, an abstract uh, form of transition system. Um, Eden Feucht and Rosenberg introduced them as uh, a tool for a very general uh, theory of binary relations, but we will uh, focus on the application to, to synthesis problem. And uh, uh, the notion of region is one of the uh, most fundamental notions in the theory of bi-structures. So here we see a transition system, uh, a label transition system where I have used the uh, colors uh, uh, instead of uh, labels. So imagine that uh, arcs with the same color represent uh, arcs with the same label. Then a region is a subset of states such that uh, each color has a uniform crossing relation. So for instance, the set uh, uh, circled in um, light blue on the left, uh, the, the states one and three, is a region because um, every red transition goes out of this set. Every blue transition does not cross the border, so to speak, of this set. And the other colors uh, uh, never repeated, so they are uniform uh, um, trivially. The uh, gray uh, set formed by um, state four is not a region because, for instance, there is one entering blue transition and another blue transition, which is totally external. Regions have been mainly used in the uh, synthesis of elementary net systems. So now we consider a bi-structure as a label transition system, and we uh, consider the problem to construct an elementary net system. At least this was uh, at the beginning, the, the kind of nets used in, in, for this problem. Um, an elementary net system such that its case graph or marking graph is isomorphic to the given transition system and such that the events of the net or transitions of the net correspond bijectively to the colors of the uh, bi-structure or uh, transition system. Uh, regions are the key tool to solve uh, this synthesis problem because uh, regions correspond to uh, places of, uh, of a net. The uniform crossing uh, property correspond to the uh, effect of uh, transitions on uh, places. Uh, and so the extension of a place in the marking graph of a net uh, is always a region. So um, I won't uh, go into the detail, but uh, given the set of regions of a transition system, one can define the so-called separation properties. And if the set of regions satisfies uh, those separation properties, then you can actually construct an elementary net system such that uh, the case graph is isomorphic to the given transition system. The net system constructed in this way with all regions is called saturated because it contains all the uh, potential places, uh, potential meaning that are compatible with the given uh, behavior, the given uh, uh, transition system. After this uh, fundamental result, uh, which relates separation properties to uh, the solution of the synthesis problem, um, Dessel and Reisig remarked that uh, you don't need to use all regions if you want to construct a net with a given behavior. Um, so they introduced the notion of admissible set of regions, which is a subset of all the regions, which solves all the separation uh, problems that were uh, mentioned before. Among the admissible sets of regions, there is one set which is um, 
interesting and I will uh, come back to this uh, later. Uh, since regions are sets of states, you can order them by set inclusion. Uh, and then you can take uh, minimal uh, non-empty regions. Well, the set of minimal regions, uh, if the transition system is separated, so admits a solution, then minimal regions form a solution. And what I find interesting about minimal regions is that uh, when you consider regional partitions of the set of states of a given transition system formed by minimal regions, uh, the corresponding places form a maximal sequential component, component in the traditional sense of net theory of the uh, net, which uh, gives a solution to the synthesis problem. Uh, this was about elementary net systems, but quite soon uh, people started uh, looking at uh, other classes of nets and try to uh, apply the ideas of uh, regions to the synthesis problem for uh, these other classes. And then uh, maybe the first class uh, to be fully studied was the class of PT nets. In this case, a region becomes a map from the set of states to the set of natural numbers, uh, which corresponds to the number of tokens that the place can hold in a given state. But then why not think of a more general notion of region? There are many other classes of um, Petri nets, maybe less popular than PT nets and elementary nets, but um, maybe one can find the general notion of region. And actually, uh, Eric Baduel and Philippe Darondeau um, founded the general theory of regions by defining the notion of type of nets. A type of nets is a special transition system which describes the possible states and the possible changes of state of a single place in a particular kind of net. And then a region um, is, can be defined as a morphism with a quite natural uh, uh, notion of uh, morphism of transition systems from a general transition system to this uh, type, to the selected type. And so um, they found that the type of elementary net systems, which is the small transition system you see on the right, the type of PT nets, uh, and also some other interesting types. And by the way, I stop for a while here because I think that this notion has not uh, received uh, maybe um, uh, enough interest. I think that it would be interesting to use this uh, notion to define quite new uh, notions of nets. I, I believe that there is room for some new ideas here. But now I will go on. I will go on by coming back to elementary regions, regions which are essentially subsets of states. Uh, when we look at uh, regions in this way, um, we can think of a classical notion of uh, duality between state and property. Uh, in general, systems described by automata, finite automata, for instance, uh, a state, global state in this case, is, can be described by a set of properties, the set of properties that uh, hold in that state. But dually, a property can be uh, described extensionally as the set of states in which it is true. Now, in, so to speak, classical approaches, every subset of states is a potential property. And so the properties defined in this way form a Boolean algebra. But in distributed system, uh, this notion becomes problematic. Uh, and this has been 
several times observed by many authors, by Lampert, for instance, by those working with uh, vector clocks, uh, and of course by Carl Adam Petri. Uh, and this reflects in the fact that uh, not all subsets of states of a transition system are regions. So if we take concurrency seriously into consideration, then in some sense, we cannot think of all subsets of global states of a system as proper, uh, let's say, local properties or locally observable properties. So, um, which subsets of states are regions? Of course, we have a definition. Uh, how regions can be um, studied from the sort of algebraic uh, point of view. Well, if we again consider regions as a partially ordered set with the set inclusion, and we draw the set of regions of a transition system um, as a partially ordered set in this way, then we um, discover an interesting thing. The structure we get, the post set we get, is not a Boolean algebra in general, but can be seen as a family of partially overlapping Boolean subalgebras. This is a very simple example uh, of, a, um, of a set that can be obtained as the set of regions of a uh, transition system. And in this case, there are two maximal Boolean subalgebras, which are um, listed below. And the interesting thing is that, uh, at least I find it interesting, is that uh, Boolean subalgebras correspond to sequential components uh, in the sense of net sequential components. So components where you never have two concurrent um, events. So in some sense, I would like to see this as a, an indication that a, an interesting logic for a distributed and concurrent system should not be uh, Boolean, but should be locally Boolean. Uh, this particular structure, uh, the structure of regions when partially ordered, um, is called uh, orthomodular poset and had been studied in very different contexts. Uh, but there is a rather rich uh, theory. So I started at some point studying uh, these orthomodular posets and in particular regional orthomodular posets which have some very special property properties. Um, in particular, uh, I started studying with a number of people, of course, um, a problem inspired by uh, a paper by Nielsen, Rosenberg and Kyagarajan who studied the relations between uh, elementary net systems and the transition systems in the context of category theory. So essentially they uh, studied the relation between the two construction, the marking graph that from a net system gives a transition system and the synthesis procedure based on regions, which given a transition system, at least in some cases, um, allows one to uh, construct a net system. Now, from a transition system, by computing the set of regions, we can get an orthomodular poset. Then, is it possible to go back? Is it possible to uh, construct a transition system, uh, possibly, um, if possible, an elementary transition system, given an orthomodular poset? So this is a sort of synthesis uh, problem in which we start with a, an orthomodular poset and we want to interpret the elements of this poset as regions of a transition system that we still uh, must construct. So the first problem uh, in this uh, synthesis procedure would be to find the states of a transition system. By looking at uh, the states 
uh, of a transition of a given transition system uh, seen in the orthomodular poset of regions, we came to a definition which corresponds to a known, uh, a well known um, uh, notion in the theory of orthomodular poset. I will call it here state uh, for simplicity. Uh, essentially, apart from the formal definition, a state is a subset of elements such that its projection on the Boolean subalgebras, on each Boolean subalgebra, is a maximal filter in the usual sense. So uh, is given by one atom and all the elements which are above uh, that atom. So um, now we have the set of states. We compute all the states in this sense uh, of the given orthomodular poset, but we must decide which transitions to use and which labels to give to the transition. Well, um, whoever has worked uh, with Petri nets will not be surprised by this idea. Uh, to construct a canonical transition system, we uh, put all the possible transitions from for each pair of states. And for the label, we take the ordered symmetric difference between uh, the two states, the initial state and the final state of, the, uh, of this given transition. Since we have defined states as sets, we can compute these symmetric differences. And what we obtain are essentially the pre conditions uh, or pre-regions uh, or input places of, the, um, of this label and the, the uh, post set, so the post conditions. In this way, we can construct, given an orthomodular post set, a transition system which has a given set of states and for each pair of states, a transition with a given label. Now, we started studying uh, the relations between a given transition system and the transition system constructed starting from its regional poset. So suppose that we take a transition system, for instance, this one. Here I have used the labels and not colors and compute its regions. Now we take the orthomodular poset of regions and compute the states and the transitions. Of course, we in general uh, will add uh, new transitions, but we discovered that we also add, uh, in some cases, new states. So um, uh, the transition system constructed from uh, a given orthomodular poset is not necessarily, um, uh, let's say, saturated. Uh, what are these new states? Well, in this example, if you have the patience to uh, compute all the regions and then construct the new transition system, you will see that the new states are all the uh, combination of uh, local states taken from the different uh, Boolean algebras. So um, we, we compute the orthomodular poset of regions we compute the Boolean subalgebras, then we take one atom for each subalgebra. Of course, if an atom is um, shared by two subalgebras, we must uh, choose the same for two subalgebras, and then um, everything which is above. And in this way, we take a, uh, a state. So for um, uh, in some cases like this, we add, or we can add new states. Of course, one could uh, ask whether this procedure stops uh, at some moment. So I, in a first uh, step, I can add new states. What happens if I now compute the regions of the new system and then the transition system of the new orthomodular poset? Well, unfortunately, we, uh, or at least I, do not yet know. This is one of the main uh, open, sorry, open problems um, on which I uh, 
would like to, to work again. So um, to, to summarize this part, and uh, let's say that an automodular poset L is stable. If um, it is isomorphic to the logic of the transition system constructed from it. Um, and now uh, we ask which orthomodular posets are stable. So far we have a, uh, some properties. So we have a subclass of orthomodular posets which are stable, but we do not know if um, this is the subclass which is uh, actually stable. Um, on a maybe more practical, so to speak, not really practical, but um, more directed towards possible applications, um, we studied also a different, uh, different problem. Uh, how can we select, given an orthomodular poset, an admissible subset of states and, uh, and especially of transitions so that uh, we can reconstruct to the same automodular poset of regions. Um, so is it possible to consider an automodular poset as a sort of uh, specification of the properties that I uh, expect to hold in, uh, in a system? And can we add some specification, some further specification, for instance, in the form of uh, maybe temporal logic uh, formulas, so that among all the possible states and transitions, we can select uh, an admissible subset. Um, there are still very few minutes, so I would uh, at least um, try to um, describe uh, a uh, sort of new subject which I am uh, currently working on, which is related to reaction systems. Um, briefly, a reaction system is a formal model of uh, biochemical uh, processes in which we assume that there is a given set S of uh, substances. Uh, which is usually called the background set. And um, there is a set of reactions which can use those substances. And more exactly, a reaction is characterized by the set of reactants, the set of inhibitors, and the set of products. So a reaction alpha can occur if in its environment, there are all the required reactants and no inhibitor. And in this case, the reaction occurs and uh, produces uh, its products. In reaction systems, a state is defined as a subset of uh, substances of the background set. And it is assumed that uh, uh, there is a set of reactions defined uh, like this. And it is assumed that uh, all enabled uh, reactions, all reactions so such that the reactants are present and no inhibitor is present, can occur uh, and actually occur simultaneously. So there is no notion of uh, conflict and there is no notion of permanence of uh, substances. So if a substance is not produced in a step, then in the next state, uh, that substance will not be present. Um, reaction systems are slightly more complicated than this, but I, uh, for, for now, I uh, consider just this uh, simple case. Um, I will skip these formal definitions because um, time is already uh, running, uh, but uh, I can at least show the problem that I'm trying to, uh, to study. Um, Given a reaction system, a set of substances and a set of reactions, one can compute, given a set of initial states, the possible uh, evolutions of, uh, of the system. And this is a, a transition system, uh, or at least we can represent it as a transition system, 
uh, where the states are subsets of, uh, of the background set and uh, the transitions are labeled by sets of reactions. All the reactions that are enabled at uh, a given state and uh, lead to the uh, set of products. So why not study the a synthesis problem for reaction systems? Suppose that we have a transition system uh, with the uh, labels given by subsets of a given set uh, Z, can we define a reaction system, a set of uh, substances associated to the given uh, reactions so that the behavior of the reaction system is isomorphic to the given um, transition system? Well, I started studying this problem guided by the idea to define substances as regions uh, to be defined, of course. Uh, and it's quite natural to think that uh, a substance corresponds to a subset of states, the subset of states in which that substance is present. So now the problem is how to find, given the transition system, the relations between regions and reactions. Well, the simplest idea is to uh, compute for each label uh, two sets, the sets of states from which that label can occur and the set of states to which that label can lead. And given these two sets, it is not difficult to uh, compute the possible relations between these subsets seen as a potential substance and the given reaction. Um, now we can define what is a region by uh, giving some formal constraints, uh, rather natural constraints given the interpretation. And what is interesting is that uh, we can solve this very simple um, kind of, uh, of um, synthesis problem for reaction system um, by using the, uh, the, the separation uh, properties, essentially the same separation properties uh, slightly adapted to the new formal uh, context, which had been defined for the, uh, let's say, classical regions uh, for Petri nets. Uh, plus another axiom, which is a specific of uh, reaction system. Um, I have also defined the equivalent of a type uh, in the sense of uh, type of nets for reaction systems, which is this uh, small transition system with just uh, two states, uh, absence and presence of a substance. Uh, and with this definition, we can uh, compute regions as morphisms from general transition systems to this simple um, type. The kind of uh, morphism is a bit different from the usual one because now we have uh, um, uh, sets of labels on the transitions, but essentially it can be done. And I would now um, see if there is any uh, relation between this idea of type and a notion of uh, set, so-called set nets, uh, defined by Yeti Klein, uh, Maciej Kutny, and Grzegorz Rosenberg as a kind, new kind of uh, Petri nets uh, that might be used to model uh, reaction systems. So uh, now it's really time to conclude, so I will skip this uh, formal part. And my conclusion is uh, quite simple. I'm fond of regions and of synthesis problems. I think this is a field which uh, has still some interesting um, open problems, as witnessed by uh, the papers that uh, Joseph mentioned. Um, and I would very much like if some young researchers, or even not necessarily young, uh, would like to tackle the open problems that I have uh, mentioned in this talk. 
And meanwhile, I thank you all for your patience.